Many of you have attended here in Parliament, in this very room, our celebration of Eid al Fatah, which uh, I hope you'll be able to come and join us again on the 30th of September this year uh, in the same venue to celebrate that very important Muslim festival and also send a message to the rest of New Zealand that we are now a country of many faiths and every faith is deserving of respect in our country and is now part of our country. And so that celebration here at the Parliament, the place where all of the representatives of New Zealand gather together as the government of this country, is a very important message to send out. I have to say that it's, it, would be, it would be good when other countries like Australia and the United States and so on take this opportunity too to start celebrating their diversity as we have done here in New Zealand. The Ethnic Affairs Minister placed emphasis on the fact that we are all stakeholders today, whether Muslim or not, young or old. We all have an interest in building a strong New Zealand, where everyone feels valued and part of the country. To conclude, I'd like to reiterate the point that we are all stakeholders here today, whether we're Muslim or non-Muslim, young or old. We all have an interest in building a stronger New Zealand, where every New Zealander feels valued a member of the New Zealand Parliament, Dr Ashraf Chaudhry, spoke and enumerated some of the initiatives of the New Zealand Government that he believed has helped to create an environment that supports the building of strong Muslim families. These initiatives include a. the provision of interest-free student loans, which will enable Muslims to go to school without worrying about taking usurious loans. B the Shared Equity Housing Scheme, which will operate on a profit and loss basis and will provide no interest loan opportunities for low-income families to buy their first homes. And C, the opening of an Islamic study centre at Victoria University of Wellington. And, and I'd often say to all the communities is that it's a fantastic opportunity to teach, to get our children in the university and in the tertiary education. And there's no reason for any of our, our children to not to go to tertiary education because you've got the money, go to the hustler, you go to study. And, uh, and that's what most of us uh, have come to this country to educate our children, to get better education for all our children. So this is one way we can do, and this government has made sure that that Professor Paul Morris, the Program Director of Religious Studies Department of Victoria University in Wellington, used the forum's platform to launch the National Centre for the Study of Islam. The centre will focus on the study of Islam in New Zealand and the Asia-Pacific region. Professor Morris called for the centre to be supported in a similar fashion as the centres in Australia have been supported, by grants from wealthy Middle Eastern countries. I've particularly found valuable the opportunity today to announce um, to FIANS um, the establishment of a Centre for Islamic Studies and Muslim Communities in New Zealand. Um, this is a national centre uh, supported uh, by the government and by the Tertiary Education Commission. Uh, this is a joint project by Victoria and Otago Universities. And uh, the aim uh, is to uh, establish a, 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 a research centre led by an international scholar, um, a specialist in Islamic studies, and uh, who not only will pursue his own research at a high level, um, but will uh, be responsible for uh, a new generation of uh, Islamic studies scholars. Um, the hope is that uh, the centre will play a, 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 an important role in relation to government, nationally and locally, in terms of a, a leadership role uh, for Islamic studies, uh, Islamic issues in New Zealand. The event's main activities were divided into four sessions with sub-themes focusing on different aspects of developing strong New Zealand families. Each session of the forum included a panel of speakers followed by a question and answer session. Sultan Yusuf, Executive Officer of Fiyads, was the forum's Master of Ceremonies. The first session sub-themed Building a Strong Community and chaired by Javed Khan, the Fiyads President, was addressed by Yoris Debris, Commissioner of Race Relations, Professor Paul Morris and Fazila Razar, 
the National Operations Manager of the Office of Ethnic Affairs. In his speech, Joris de Bries said that a strong community creates an environment for strong families. He acknowledged the resilience of the New Zealand Muslim community after 9-11 in the way the community engaged others and refused to be silenced. He observed that for communities like the New Zealand Muslim community to have survived an environment such as the one created in the aftermath of 9-11, the community must, one, not feel victimised, two, should have a strong sense of humour, three, possess a thick skin, four, develop public relations strategies, and five, engage with other communities. But you have actually come out of it feeling much more confident and much more connected. And I think you've done that through uh, building understanding, uh, through engagement with governments, engagement uh, with other faith communities, uh, engagement uh, with your local communities, engagement with other organisations that are active in uh, promoting uh, and valuing diversity in New Zealand, such as your participation in the Diversity Action Programme, and engagement with the media. Professor Paul Morris described the Muslim community as one of the most active and open communities in New Zealand. This openness was exemplified by the Muslim community through its umbrella organisation, FIANS, being the first to recognise the religious diversity statement. Professor Morris observed that FIANS is strategically actively building a public profile while keeping the Muslim community open. These strategies, according to him, are ingredients for building a strong community, one that raises its young to have confidence in their faith. Hijab wearing as a symbol of identity and the importance of identity in building a strong community were discussed by Professor Morris. I think it's a, an honour to be here for the first FIENS Muslim Stakeholders Meeting. Uh, it seems like it, it, in itself it's indicative of the sort of innovations and new ideas that have come out of FIENS. And FIENS has played a, a very unique role, not just for Muslim communities in New Zealand, but in terms of interfaith. Um, the first religious group that endorsed the diversity statement um, wasn't the Catholic Church or the Protestant Church, but was FIENS. And uh, in terms of mosque open days, in terms of the events in Parliament, the Eid event, um, but also uh, at national and local level, um, the interfaith activities have been supported by FIENS in a kind of unprecedented way. And the, the importance of this is that uh, a, a strong FIENS has been good for interfaith, good for community relations in the country. So I, I think they, uh, they've played a, a major and a significant role and hope they continue to do so. Fazila Razar discussed the changing face of New Zealand Muslims and explained the role of the Office of Ethnic Affairs. She particularly emphasised the aims of the Building Bridges programme her office initiated to include building relationships between Muslims and other New Zealand communities, promoting positive awareness and visibility of Muslims in New Zealand, and partnership with existing Muslim organisations and projects. So as a society, New Zealand is, is, is dealing with um, some, some interesting changes that have happened really very recently. The second session of the forum was sub-themed Building Strong Families. The session was chaired by Dawood Azimola and addressed by Dr. Rajin Prasad, Commissioner of the Families Commission, Dr. Cindy Cairo, Commissioner of the Children's Commission, and Anne Dozart, Manager of Family and Community Services of the Ministry of Social Development. Dr. Prasad, in his speech, said, There is no perfect family and there is not one thing that makes a family strong. He however suggested that four things are needed in building a strong family. One, the society the family belongs to must be supportive of family. Two, its government policies must be consistent with the need of the family. Three, its neighbourhoods must be strong. And four, there must be love and mutual respect in the family. Promoting now and having this conference is a very useful signal both to the Muslim community and to others, that you know this community has arrived, they're here as a permanent part of New Zealand, and they should be taken seriously. So I think that's an important point.